September 12, 1943. German paratroopers snatched Mussolini from his mountaintop prison in Italy. This daring and successful exploit stunned the world. Inspired by the rescue of his ally, Hitler ordered an even more daring bid to capture his greatest enemy. Good morning, Herr Admiral. Oberst Radl, send him to me at once. I have notified Herr Oberst Radl of your arrival. Thank you. Come in, Radl. Herr Admiral. Come and sit down. The meeting went well. The Fuhrer had something specific in mind. A simple exercise in logistics. Nothing very complicated. He merely wants Winston Churchill brought from London to Berlin. And we are ordered to make a feasibility study. Today is Wednesday. By Friday, he will forget it. But Himmler will not. Reichsführer Himmler approve. Only of my being put on the spot. That meeting, you should have seen it, Radl. There was Hitler, first ranting, then cajoling, then perfectly rational, then raging and stamping like a... like the ringmaster of some freak circus. Goebbels, hopping from one foot to another like a... Like a schoolboy. Mormon. <clears throat> a vulture. Perched in the corner, watching, listening, never speaking. And Mussolini. Mussolini. An automaton rattle. And I looked round that room. And I wondered, am I the only one who can see it? And if so, what must I look like to them? Herr Admiral, the feasibility study will be a total and unnecessary waste of time. Make it immediately.
complete for the last month. If Herr Oberts could give me a rough idea of our problem. I can be quite specific about it. The Fuhrer has instructed us to kidnap Winston Churchill. Good God. Well, Carl, do at least a feasibility study on it. Well, something which might fit our needs came in yesterday. Well, just to mention, as far as I remember, if I may, sir. Uh, no. Yeah, here it is. From a uh, codename Starling, a village in England called Studley Constable. How do we receive reports from the Starling? From the Spanish Embassy in London by diplomatic pouch. There is also a radio contact. Exactly where is Studley Constable? The east coast of England, uh, the county of Norfolk. Let's have a look at the place. Yeah, well, yeah, but... oh. yeah. Ah, Herr Obers. <laughs> Isolated coastline. Very rural, wide beaches, salt marshes. Ideal. Now, a man to lead it, Carl. Crash landed, 1940, glider assault. Albert Canal, Belgium, dropped into Crete 41. Wounded taking Miami Airfield. Night Cross, dead volunteer assault group of 300, special action Leningrad. Stalingrad's Night Cross with oak leaves and swords. January this year, dropped into Kiev with 167 surviving in unit to get two cut off regiments out of Russia. Albert Kurt Steiner. And the language? Educated in England. Third time in the last month, despite Goering's personal guarantee. Are you familiar with the works of Jung, Carl? I am aware of the works of Jung, not familiar, Herr Oberst. A very great thinker, a rational man. And yet he speaks of something called synchronicity. Events having a coincidence in time. And because of this, the feeling that some much deeper motivation is involved. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, sir. I take this affair. The Fuhrer comes up with an absurd suggestion that we emulate Skordzeny by abducting Churchill. Now, for political reasons, we're prodded into making a worthless report of the prospects. And then suddenly, synchronicity rears its disturbing head. Yeah, yeah, I see that. We receive a routine report with a brief notation that next month, after visiting a local bomber command, Churchill will spend a weekend in a country manor less than seven miles from a deserted coastline. At any other time, this report would mean nothing. At this particular time, in that particular file, Comes a circumstance which titillates. Coincidence to tease us. Surely Herr Obus doesn't really believe this thing could be carried off. A wink from a pretty girl at a party results rarely in climax, Carl. But a man is a fool not to push a suggestion as far as it will go. <laughs> Find this man for me, Carl. He's been out of Germany too long.
Hands. Hands. Let's stretch our legs. Stay on the train. No one allowed off the train. I beg your pardon, sir. Sir, I'm sorry, but you must remain on the train. If memory serves me, the Polish army surrendered in 1939. Sir? Who are these people? Oh, Jews, sir. Jews? They are raising the ghetto to the ground, burning them out. They've put up one hell of a fight, I can tell you. Oh, how? With umbrellas and crutches? Take the prisoner now. Prisoner? What is Jim? <laughs> What is your name? Prana. Good luck, Prana. Identify yourself. Oberst Kurt Steiner, commanding the 12th Parachute Detachment. A salute is customary to a general, a Oberst, even to one of SS. You didn't seem quite so discriminating a moment ago. I have nothing for or against Jews personally, but I have seen too many good men die for cause to watch a young girl be killed for smart. Was doing his duty. He reminds me of something that I occasionally pick up on my shoe in the gutter. Very unpleasant on a hot day. And if you have the dubious honor of commanding this senseless slaughter, I'd advise you to keep him downwind at all times. That is, of course, if you can tell the difference anymore. For God's sake, Kurt. What am I to do with you, Herr Oberst? You're a military hero. Awarded the Knight's Cross with oak leaves and swords for gallantry. Yet responsible for the attempted escape of an enemy of the state? Abetted by the mutinous conduct of your men! By rights, you should all be court martialed. Difficult decisions are the privilege of rank, Herr Gruppenführer. But as for my men, uh, they seem to feel a certain loyalty to me. I uh, don't suppose you could content yourself with uh, my head and overlook their part in this thing? Huh? There you are, you see, Hans. It's infallible. I can always tell a thoroughgoing bastard when I see one. Hey, Obis. In here, Carl. Good morning. Good morning, Hale. The material arrived from Starling. It is excellent, Carl. Truly excellent. Starling's to be commended. Yeah. 
Yes, he's good. What news of Oberst Steiner? Oh, we are having some difficulty in tracing him, Herr Oberst. He appears to be back in Germany, but as to exactly where we've run into roadblocks, if Herr Oberst knows what I mean. Even rumors of a court martial. But we'll find him. I'm sure of it. And now, yeah, to a possible undercover operative, I've decided on this man. He's currently lecturing in that university here in Berlin. Send for him immediately. Yes. Oh, and Carl, send this message to Starling. Yes, Herr Oberst. Where is Herr Oberst, Bartle? He's in the map room, Herr Admiral. This message has been sent out. Did you originate it? I did, Herr Admiral. Very interested in your visitor of 6th November. We'd like to drop some friends in to meet him in the hope they might persuade him to come back with them. Your comments expected by usual route with all relevant information. You've exceeded your authority, Rardell. You were told to prepare this feasibility study, not embellish a joke. With Herr Admiral's permission, it is no longer a joke. It could be done. In my opinion, it should be done. What if Churchill prefers to die? What if abduction becomes assassination? No one specified dead or alive. Kill Churchill when we've already lost the war. I'm sure you've done a good job, Rattle. Very thorough. But this operation could make the charge of the Light Brigade look like a sensible military exercise. Drop it. Herr Oberst, he has arrived. Come in, Colonel. Right, isn't it? Hmm? The top of the morning to you. It's not Irish whiskey, but it'll do to be going on with. Better for you to drink than me. I have a feeling I might be needing it. May I? Yeah. The last time I was invited up here to Section 3, one of the lads persuaded me to jump out of a dornier 5,000 feet above Ireland in the dark, and me with this terrible fear of heights. <laughs> You're uh, planning a holiday to uh, England, are you? They say that Brighton's lovely this time of year. <laughs> they're Russian, Mr. Devlin. I picked up a taste for them in the Winter right. War. Well, they're probably the only thing that kept you awake in the snow. Yeah? Right. Yeah. Hmm? Now, I had a proposition to put you, Mr. Devlin. You had, then? Have. I'm working, you know, Colonel. It's a university. For a man like you, it would seem to be rather like a thoroughbred racing horse finding himself pulling a milk cart. Oh, you got away with the words, Colonel. You want me to go back to Ireland, is that it? Well, I can't do it. I wouldn't last a week. They'd arrest me and throw me back. No, in no, the we car. don't want you to go back to Ireland. Not the way you mean. No. You're still a supporter of the Irish Republican Army. Soldier of Colonel. Once in, never out. But you're here in Germany and your compatriots in England. Why? I don't like soft target hits. I don't want to spend my days in Bayswater mixing up explosives in my landlady's saucepan to blow the arms and legs off a couple of passers-by. My fight is with the bloody British Empire. And I'll fight it on my own two feet. Well, if it's some rabid fanatic you're after, Colonel, they sent you the wrong man. Am I correct to assume your aim is still total victory against England? I know that's your aim. 
My aim is a united Ireland. I appreciate the distinction, but either way, it would be necessary for Germany to win the war first. Twigs might fly one day, Colonel, but I doubt it. Mr. Devlin, I want you to go to England for me. Colonel, I barely know you. To assist in the kidnapping and safe return to Germany of Winston Churchill. Give me another one of them Bolshevik firecrackers, will you? I think I fell asleep in the snow. Hey, Elvis. Yeah. Good evening, Elvis. I'm Stonefuhrer Tuberg of the SS. Reichsführer Himmler presents his compliments and requests you to bring the entire file of the plan designated Eagle. And when is that to be? Now, Herr August. Do you seem nervous, Herr August? Please relax. May I smoke, Herr Reichsführer? No. A masterful job. Thank you, Herr Reichsführer. But, you know, there are some people who would say that uh, such an operation could make the charge of the Light Brigade look like a sensible military exercise. <laughs> Have you heard that phrase before, Herr August? I don't immediately recall, Herr Reichsführer. I know all about your plan. I know what is written on every single page. Even the one you haven't got yet. <laughs> the court martial of Herr Oberst Steiner and his men. The uh, arrogance of this Steiner is dazzling. An unusual man, this, uh, this Steiner. Intelligent, ruthless, brilliant soldier, but above all, a romantic fool. He threw away everything. Rank, career, the future. He's presently serving in a penal colony on the island of, uh, uh, Alderney. And all for the sake of some little Jewess whom he'd never clapped eyes on before. You know he's a veteran of five successful commando raids. Six, I believe. Educated in England. Speaks the language perfectly, without an accent. The ideal man for the job, eh, Herr Oberst? If you think so, Herr Reichsführer. And so do you. But the Herr Admiral Canaris doesn't think so. My loyalty to Herr Admiral is exceeded only by your loyalty to the Führer himself. Isn't that so? I was sure of it. <laughs> now, this Churchill business. Our Führer wants it seen through. Now, you have uh, considerable autonomy in running your office. You ought to be able to use it as an excuse to prevent Canaris from knowing what's going on. What kind of authority would I have to carry such a project through, Herr Reichsführer? Aloud, if you please. Herr Oberst Radl is acting under my direct and personal orders in a matter of the utmost importance to the Reich. All personnel, military and civil, without distinction of rank, will assist him in any way that Oberst Radl sees fit to demand. Adolf Hitler. So, you see, what? Under the terms of that document, even I find myself under your personal command. 
Good luck. I can only envy your inevitable success in the matter. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Major Neuer, Commandant of the island of Alderney. A distinct pleasure, Herr Oberst, a distinct pleasure. Read this, please. I see, Herr Oberst. What is it you wish of me? With the field unit here, Operation Shah. It terminates at this moment. The Deplasher Steiner, Van Neustadt, and the 29 men. 18 men, Herr Oberst. There are only 18 now. are required to ride the larger torpedo craft into enemy shipping. Mm. The torpedoes detach, of course. Of course, most of the time. Burial detail, the usual letters of commendation. And for God's sake, get the names right this time. Thank you, Herr Mayor. But I thought I should... Thank you, Herr Mayor. Steiner? Yes, I'm Steiner. What is it? My name is Radl. Well, what is it? I have two men to bury and no office to make small talk in. Your credentials are hopelessly impeccable, Herr Oberst. What can I do for you? Lead a raiding party to England to kidnap Winston Churchill. Don't seem very much impressed. I haven't seen your plan yet. Here? his decision. I'm going to that pub up there and give some thought to mine. The only time this plan makes any sense to me is when I'm drunk. Here. Oberleutnant König Oberst. This configuration seems somewhat abnormal for an Ebo. That's because she is actually a converted British MTB Oberst. 
captured making a drop off the Dutch coast. Mm. Sir. You're familiar with the east coast of England? Yeah, well, West, I've been there. Five years I was first made on a cargo ship out of England. This could work, you know. It will be done. It is a direct order from the Fuhrer himself. I stood opposite Adolf once, when he gave me this. Oh, I forgot. One of those. You're a German officer. You swore the same oath as I did. You have no choice. And of course I do. I'm going to die here anyway, eventually. You forget, Radl, that I am under suspended sentence of death. Officially disgraced. I do not retain my rank. Only my authority, because of the uh, peculiar circumstances of this job. And I offer you a chance for reinstatement of rank and complete vindication for you and your men. My men need no vindication. You said it could be done. It's possible. Of all the world's leaders, Churchill is probably the least protected. Unlike the Fuhrer. Steiner, is thumbing your nose at the Fuhrer more important to you than the lives of your men? 31 of you a few weeks ago. How many left? Sixteen. You owe them this last chance to live. Or to die in England instead. Huh? I will put it to my men. They are entitled to know. Only the destination for now. Revealing the specific target would be going too far. I will put it to my men. China. It may not win the war, but it would make them think about a negotiated peace. Hmm? A negotiated peace? I will put that to my men also. God bless all here. Give us a glass of your strongest, will you? Gestapo. So that's the way the Gestapo is dressed in Berlin these days. Gestapo. Drink? I haven't sucked my thumb in years. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to do it for me. Sure. Suck it. Now, about your Mr. Uh, Devlin. A man of considerable resource and guile, I assure you. <laughs> Tell me something, Mr. Devlin. Just why are you coming along? Can't you tell, Colonel? I'm the last of the world's great adventurers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sweet Mary, was her God. <laughs> Tough bunch of lads he's got in there, Colonel. Uh -huh. 
What did he say? Steiner insisted on the unanimous consent of his men. I'm not surprised at that. If they agree, we'll leave tonight. Tonight? Huh? We dropped him to Southern Ireland as close to the Ulster border as possible. Tonight? But what about my papers? Your Irish passport and British medical discharge have been provided. Starlings found your job. You'll be a marsh warden, whatever that is. It's a marsh warden. What about the money? Ten thousand pounds first. No, they asked for twenty thousand pounds. No, ten thousand has been deposited in Geneva as per instructions. Ten more upon completion of the mission. You think I'd sell out? It's just that you've been so expensive to buy in the first place. <laughs> going to jump in those clothes. Well, I might look a little bit silly going down, Mr. Steiner, but I'll be a hell of a lot safer when I land on the ground. There's an old poem I know, which freely translated from the Irish, says, I realized fear one morning to the blare of the fox hunter's sound, when they're all chasing after the poor bloody fox. It's safer to be dressed like the hound. Quite a literary man, Devlin. Well, the truth be known, Colonel. You're a bloody literary genius. Your complete instructions? All right. All of it? Everything? Mm -hmm. No cyanide pill? I couldn't conceive of a situation which would force you to take one. Ages, they would have burned you for that. Goodbye, Mr. Devlin. I will see you in England. I'll be there. How do I drop out of this thing? Release your safety belt. I turn the aircraft upside down, you drop out. Did it ever occur to you that the signature on that authorization you keep handing around could just be a clever forgery? Why don't you fly to Birch's garden and ask him yourself? Oh, let's not bother the man. This is Joanna Gray. That's right. Liam Devlin. I could do with a cup of tea. It's been a hell of a journey. Come inside.
That's a neat trick. Well, we're both Irish, sir. Wolf found me. What's her name? Patch. Sit down, Mr. Devlin. It's lovely the countryside, isn't it? You'd hardly know there was a war on. Patch? <sighs> They're living in a fool's paradise. They lack the discipline the Fuhrer has brought to Germany. These are various papers you'll need. I'll give you these. These are the ones they give to me. You know, uh, Sir Henry is away for some time, and only the servants are in the uh, manor house. Does anyone else know that Winston Churchill will be here? Only Father Verica. As to your duties, well, in the main, they'll be merely gamekeeping. I've got your motorbike, which is parked outside, and... You can have this shotgun. It is loaded. You know the way to the cottage? Yeah, I just go down the road. The puddle will be on my right, and I go through the manor house gates, down to the end of the lane. Right. Here's the keys. Oh, by the way, petrol for the motorbike. The ration allowance is only three gallons a month. Well, I hope I won't be here that long, Mrs. Gray. Good day to you, Colleen. God save the good work. Well, what's your back? My back? Mr. Devlin. Mr. Devlin, is it? Mrs. Gray told us all about you at the last WVS meeting. You're the new Marsh Warden. And you're with Woman's Voluntary Service. I help out. When I have the time. Sort of, um, service in the troops, is it? I don't mind. Miss, I do believe you're a little bit of a tease. Children tease, Mr. Devlin. And I'm almost 19. <laughs> Bless all here. Can I have a glass of your strongest, please? I'm George Wilde, the publican. Liam Devlin. Marsh Warden. And that's Arthur Seymour. And over there by the fire, Laker Armsby. Will you join me in a drink? A pint of bitter wouldn't be a burden. Pint of bitter? Sir, I buys me own. Coming in here all grand with a shotgun and your motorbike. Buying drinks for us who's worked the estate for years. And content themselves with less. Sure, and it can only be because of my good looks. Make fun of me, boy, and I'll squash you like a slug. Arthur. You walk softer out here. You keep your place. And you stay away from Molly Pryor. Sure, and if I've caused any offense, I'm sorry. Arthur. Now get out. Today, I leave, boy. But from now on, when you see me, you leave. On a nine, please.
Straight here, Father. Oh, good afternoon. Liam Devlin. I'm Sir Henry's new Marsh Warden. Uh, I'm just introducing myself around. Oh, well, I'm Father Vereker. And uh, this is my sister, Pamela. She's up oh. from Mildenhall Aerodrome on a weekend leave. That's your sister, is it? How do you do? How do you do? I'll be back for tea for you. Mm. Bye. Bye, Mr. Devlin. Goodbye. We have a small, if loyal, congregation here, Mr. Devlin. I look forward to your adding to it. You are a Catholic. Oh, yes, I am a Catholic. Did you come for confession? Oh, no, with apologies, Father. I'm afraid this poor soul is well past redemption. God forgive me, but this parish confessional could do with a spicy revelation every now and then. Oh, and don't forget the words of our Lord, Mr. Devlin. The last shall be the first. And in that case, Father, I'm assured a place at the head of the line. Herr Oberst. Will it be ready in time? No problem, Herr Oberst. What kept you? What kept me, is it? Why, you <laughs> little devil. Oh, God, and I'll know you to the crack of doomsday, that's for sure. What's that supposed to mean? It's an expression they have from where I come. You use these things? No. Good for you. you stunt your growth. You with your green years still ahead of you? Almost 19, eh? What month? February. 25th? 22nd. Mm. But I was right, though. You're a little fish. You and me should get along well. Me being a Scorpio. Never marry a Virgo, though. Virgo and Pisces never hit it off. Now, take Arthur, for example. I've got a terrible hunch he's a Virgo. You'll have to watch it with him. Arthur? Arthur Seymour? Are you crazy? No, but I think he is. Pure, clean, virtuous, and not very hot. That's a Virgo. Oh, that's a terrible shame from where I'm lying. You're gonna have a terrible problem with your weight if you don't watch your food. Bastard. Are you laughing at me? What else would you have me do with you? Body prior. Now, don't answer that. 
How do you know my name? George Wilde told me. At the pub. Oh, I see. And Arthur, is he there? Well, you could say that. I get the feeling that he looks upon you as his prisoner property. Well, he can go to hell. I belong to no man. Your nose turns up. Did anybody ever tell you that? And when you get angry, your mouth turns down at the corners. I'm sure you could find a hundred things wrong with me, Mr. Devlin. A thousand. But you wouldn't throw me out of your bed on a wet Saturday night, I'm sure. But that's meant for you. Anything's better than nothing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here. You don't know the first thing about me. Because if you did, you'd know that I much prefer a warm autumn afternoon under the pines to a wet Saturday night any day. Then the sand is a terrible way of getting where it shouldn't be. Out of here before I let my mad passion run away with me. Go on, get. Get! like I will. Yes, I think you do. Oh, darling, you bloody idiot. You never learn. Never bloody learn. I've spoken with Himmler. He sends personal wishes for success from the Fuhrer himself. You've altered the parachutes. Why? Well, unfortunately, we have high tide at first light when we must drop. So we may land in the surf. These slots enable us to guide the chute. It's experimental and the landing velocity is high. Mm. But we have no choice. I assume they've been adequately tested. I have one request, a demand, actually. Blackmail at this point, hmm? We are not spies, and we will not be treated as such by the British. If anything goes wrong, we will wear our own uniforms under the Polish outfits. And if necessary, we will fight and die as what we are, German paratroopers. Max, it is not a subject for negotiation. That case agreed. Compliments on the dress. It's a great improvement. Why pick on me? Because you're lovely. Because you could never fall in love with me. Well, I might. Just for a spite. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. I could never fall in love with you. I'm bad for you, girl, dear. I'm no good for you at all. There's no future in it. I'm not telling you that to make you want me more. I'm telling you because it's the truth. I'm here. Your turn to leave. Oh, God. Arthur, did I ever tell you about the uncle I've got up in Belfast? No, of course I didn't. He earned his living as a bare knuckle boxer. <gasps> he 
It's all right, Father. I'm just telling him about the Holy Trinity. You know it? Footwork. Timing and hitting. And a little bit of dirty work. Learn these, my uncle, it's a. And you'll inherit the earth as surely as the meek. You never know when to... Well, I don't. Do you, Arthur? Liam! Well, Arthur, looks like he bought you a drink after all. It's perfect. Which is in? <laughs> You, tell Obes Radl who you are. Kaprao Andrzej Jankowski, panie pułkowniku. You. Kaprao Stanisław Kunicki, panie pułkowniku, as you very well know. Get back in line. Na moją komendę, Radu, chodź! Very much impressed. You know, it all started as a joke, an insane joke. I hope that Winston Churchill appreciates our sense of humor. Good luck, Steiner. Thank you, Max. Eagle, this is Falcon receiving you. What are conditions over the nest? Visibility good, cloud cover low, wind freshening. Eagle out. his game is. Black market or worse? 
There's two army trucks outside without numbers on. Yet, this German, it's worse. Arthur, if you love me, you won't breathe a word of this until it's had a chance I'll to... I'll have that bastard arrested oh. within the hour. I've never meant to tease you. I know I have, but I've never really meant to. You lying little tart. I love him, Arthur. What you do to him, you do to me as well. You can both rot in hell. Stop! Arthur! I won't let you go! By the way, have you found out who Starling is yet? Of course I have. Why? Because I'm hoping it is not him. It isn't. I want him buried right away. Frank, bring two men. Sure. I have the honor to announce the eagle has landed. I am very pleased to hear it. I return to Alderney within the hour. I would be honored if you would tell our Fuhrer. I will tell Fuhrer nothing. For a variety of reasons, I would prefer this to come, uh, how shall I put it? I would prefer it to come as a surprise to him. How much of a surprise could it be? You have the letter. These are difficult times, Herr Oberst. The destiny of Germany rests on his shoulders. It is essential we avail ourselves of this opportunity to please him. We are all in Oberst Steiner's hands now.
Hello to you, grandfather. Foreigners? Polish. Kapral Kunitsky. Kunitsky? Well, that's not your fault, son, is it? Please, don't stop. My apologies, Father. I am Corporal Andrzej Jankowski, sent by my Colonel to find you. However, I could not help myself. <laughs> I don't blame you. You play marvelously. You know, Bach needs to be played well. It's a fact I remember with constant frustration every time I take that seat. Uh, I'm sorry, Father, but my Colonel... Oh, yes. Father Verick, is it? Yes. Colonel Miller, assigned to command the independent Polish parachute unit. Colonel Miller, what can I do for you? Well, we're on uh, exercise presently. I only have a handful of my men here. The rest are scattered all over Norfolk. Now, there is a rendezvous tomorrow, but I'd like to take these chaps on some harmless maneuvers through the village. If that wouldn't be too much of a burden for you. <laughs> on the contrary, Colonel, we could do with a bit of excitement around here. You know, I'm sure everyone in the village will do everything they can to help. Well, I should be counting. Counting on that, Father. Philip, this is Captain Harry Clark of the American Rangers. Ah. Oh. How do you do, Father? How do you do? My sister's told me a great deal about you. Oh, Pamela, this is uh, Colonel Miller. Colonel, this is my sister, Pamela. How do you do? How do you do? And Captain Clark? Colonel? Captain? I hope you'll be staying for tea. No, I'm sorry, Father, I can't. I'm needed back at headquarters. Oh. We had no idea you guys were in the neighborhood. Yes, you're quite a surprise to our group as well. Free Polish paratroopers, huh? Yes, that's right, Captain. Well, listen, we've got a couple Polish guys in our outfit. Maybe your men would like to meet them sometime. Yes, maybe a little later, if it's not too far. Uh, where exactly are you staying, Captain? Well, we're about uh, eight miles up the road at Meltham House. Ah, Meltham House. What sort of strengths would you have there? Well, we're just a company now. Ah, Meltham House. I'll make a point to remember that. Good. Miss Verica. Goodbye. Father, thank you. Not at all, Colonel. Captain. Colonel. Have the men hang on by the truck. Let's have a look at the upper part of the village. Don't drive too slowly. And, and on, on the left-hand left side of the road. Foreigners, Poles. And Yanks, too. And Irish. Get back into your foxhole, Laker. You're getting invaded. <laughs>
What have you been doing in that uniform, Captain? Moss, you did not get those three rockers by asking stupid questions. What is it now? The new outfit arriving? No, sir. Uh, he wants to see you. <sighs> sir? Eight years. Eight years in the National Guard every other weekend. Two weeks out of the year up to my ass in swamp water in Louisiana. I thought I can feel those mosquitoes now. But I made it. I got my rank. You were at Benning when I got my command. Best goddamn outfit a man could ever hope to have. Eleven weeks training for this mission. Day after tomorrow, the rest of the outfit's coming in. We're gonna hit the beach. That was my chance. My last chance, Clark. To finally. Get my feet wet in action before this goddamn war is over. And now this. You won't be leading us in, sir? Leave you in, goddamn it. The bastards are sending me home. Hey, read this. Read it. Go ahead. Top line. Pitts, Lawrence E. 01683-8621. Post holding detachment. Reassignment Fort Benning, Georgia. Air transportation, priority two. Hell, they're not even in a hurry to get me home. Gosh, uh, isn't there anything you can do, Colonel? Do about it? Look at the signatures on the bottom of that. Not one of those men have ever been in action. Not one had a combat command. Not one. What do you want? What are you doing here, Clark? Sir. Fort Benning, Georgia? You know how hot it is in Fort Benning, Georgia? I should have been in on the finish. Wait till my daddy hears about this. Keep up this foolishness for 20 more minutes, Hans. Then gradually establish the roadblocks. Slowly, mind you. Two men at a time. Yes, that's coming along nicely, Bajinski. Thank you, sir. Very impressive, Colonel. Well, thank you, Father. My new orders call for me to be heading down into the marshes soon. I don't suppose you'd know of anyone who could... As fate would have it, Colonel. You are even now in the presence of the official marsh warden himself, Liam Devlin, at your service. Oh, what a bit of good luck. Colonel, I'm Mrs. Gray. How do you do? Considering Mr. Devlin has been in my employ for less than two days, I might suggest a third person along, as an assurance against losing you both forever. I, uh, I don't suppose I could be rude enough to impose. Not at all. I'd be delighted. Thank why, you. why don't I, uh... Enjoy yes, please do. I'll get in the back. It's a little... Watch out! Jacob! Any further news of Churchill? Yes, the party's left King's Lynn. In the house? Is there an alternate escape route? There's an entrance at the rear and another one opposite the church. Yes. Well, let's hope it won't be necessary. What a lovely day for fantasies. The Colonel's. That he'll actually be able to pull this thing off. Mine, a cup of tea, and a little country girl. And Mrs. Gray's, that even after all of this is over, she's still going to be asked to be Lady Willoughby. Sir Henry's a pleasant enough dullard. We became friends after my husband died. They were partners together in a South African venture. South African. That's what I can hear in your voice. A trace of Afrikaans. My mother, since you noticed. She died there, along with my sister, in a British concentration camp. Or did you think the Nazis invented them? Revenge. The classic motive, I congratulate you. What about you, Mr. Devlin? Do you have a motive? Regrettably, no. 
In other words, if someone else had asked you to abduct Adolf Hitler, you would be in Berlin right now. If all this lunacy doesn't work out, Colonel, that's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Buy you a drink, Colonel. Well, not right now, thank you. Is it great? Not for me. Well, I'll be off then. I sincerely hope I've been of help. I don't know how we would have managed without you, Mr. Devlin. Perhaps we'll meet later, hmm? somewhere in the marsh. It's a very large marsh, Colonel. Good luck with your maneuvers. Success. Now. You two, the staff of the manor house. Take these people into the church. Bring those along as well. Colonel, I know what you're doing, and I know who you want. And it's monstrous. He won't stand a chance. If you don't mind, Father, I insist on giving it a try. Hans, get the men in position. Don't let anyone out of the village, and once anyone comes in, they stay in. Yo. See father. I have to talk to him. Yes, of course. Of course you can. Something terrible has happened. Oh, it's all, it's all right. S stay here. I'll, I'll get Philip now. This door is locked. Why? It is the sacristy, Colonel Miller. It is where I keep the church records, my vestments and such. The key is at my house. I will go and fetch it if you like. No, that won't be necessary, Father. So, 
You intend to assassinate Mr. Churchill as he passes through here today. What an astonishing notion. Give it up, man. There's no surprise left in it. Perhaps just one surprise left, Father. Your good Lord willing. Our chances are. The e boat is off the coast, Hans. Churchill is on schedule. Anything is possible. Where have you been? I killed Arthur. I know, don't fret yourself. If they ever do find him, they'll think it was me that done it. Now, did you tell anybody about it? You said you were a traitor. Are you? Molly, I never betrayed anything in my life that I believed in. Your bloody Germans have locked everyone up in the church. They're going to try and kill Churchill. You're a bloody oh. traitor! Oh. Only they don't stand a chance because Pamela's gone for the Rangers. Oh. Don't, don't try and run. Run right away. Sure, and that'd be the sensible thing to do, wouldn't it? Good God, girl, don't you know me better than that? Do you think I could leave them in the lurch? I wrote you a letter. It's not much, but here it is for what it's worth. But it's on the table if you're interested.
she? Pamela knows everything. She's gone to Melton House for the Rangers. I shot at her. I'm sure I hit her. No matter what the reason, no matter how deeply felt the cause, you lived with us, Joanna. You accepted our admiration, our kindness, and our trust. May God grant you time to relive this moment in shame. Are you able to communicate with the e-boat? Tell them to go to position one immediately. This really is quite a beautiful spot, you know. Yes. I understand, Mrs. Gray. No matter how you feel about the British, I imagine that a part of you must hate to leave here. That's just it, Colonel. Until this very moment, standing here, in spite of all that I've set in motion, I never actually believed I'd have to go. Said waiting. I'm waiting. Hey, girl's okay, Clark. She's in hospital. Took a bullet from some double-crossing bitch named Gray, enemy agent. Those poles you ran into are Krauts. Come here to kill Churchill. Now listen up. Churchill just left King's Lynn. I want Sir, you to you know to find the war office. My God, you have any idea how long I'd be on that phone trying to make those fat ass bastards at staff believe me? No, by God, I'm gonna nail those Krauts myself, and I got the men to do it. Action this day. That's Churchill's personal motto. You know no, that? I still think we should notify now, the I want office. you to go and head off Churchill at the Walsingham Road. If you don't notify the war office, I will. Sir. Moss, you get the hold of the war office. Top priority. If anything happens to Churchill because you're late, this country's going to swing you from Big Ben by your balls. Cancel that call, Moss. Put the windshield down on that Jeep, Haley. Yes, sir. Give me a handful of those grenades, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Fine, sir. Not up. Where are you from, son? Omaha, sir. By this time next year, pigeons are going to be crapping on statues of you across the whole damn state of Nebraska. <laughs> yes, sir. Not up, boy. Spot anything, sir? No. Hang on, Miss Lieutenant. I think I can take this place without firing one single round. Yes, sir. Get out of the heading.
Well, this looks like it. This is Colonel Clarence E. Pitts, United States Army. You're surrounded. Send out your commanding officer. You speak English? Yes. I'm going to give you five minutes to lay down your arms and surrender your hostages. Now, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Where's your commanding officer? Yes. Are you making fun of me, soldier? Oh, God damn. They're gonna kick Colonel Clarence E. Pitts around. They got another thing coming. I'm gonna blow their asses right out of that church. This is Delta Two to Mallory. Where are you, Mallory? Mallory, where are you? This is Mallory. We're all set here. All right, stand by. Becca, you out there? Yeah, we're out here, Colonel. We're in position. Well, it's about time. All right, stand by. We're going to move in. Mallory! Come on, we're moving out. We're moving out. Don't you think we ought to send a reconnaissance team in, sir, first? You know, look the place over. And have a couple of my men get their asses shut off to find out something I already know. There's a lot of places we could be ambushed, sir. Plus, that, that, that church is full of civilians. Senator, you question one more of my orders, and I'm gonna bust your ass down to private so fast, you won't know what hit you. Now, get in that Jeep! Yes, sir. Go, Ben! Go, Mallory! Get a missile for the bazooka. Back, God 
Damn it, come in, Vic. Come back here. We're getting fired from the church belfry, the mill house, the pub. The other jeep went in the pond. There's four dead, and we're pinned down, Colonel. Four dead? Hey, this is Frazier, Colonel. We got three dead here, and they're firing at us from three sides. Well, but pull yourself together, regroup. God damn it, do something, Fraser. Regroup. That dumb son of a bitch. This is Mallory. We've been clobbered. I don't know how many dead. I got that truck with a bazooka. A truck? What do they want, for Christ's sake? A silver star? Frazier radio this in, sir. Oh, holy Jesus. Would you put me through to Arrow, please? Could you get the colonel? No, sir. Oh, let me have a crossbow, please. I've got the whole outfit ready to move. Colonel Pitts is a man of uh, limited combat experience. Apparently no longer. Nope. Oh, Major Kakoran here. We have an incident involving Empire. I'm gonna go up on the second floor see if I can find out where we are. Give me those binoculars. Fix that flat there. God, this is where that bitch Gray lives. Get up here, Haley. Bring that guy. I now have a suggestion, your host. Yes, Brent? We should leave immediately. Yes, Brent. Get back to the church!
I'll let you know when I need you, Father. Get to your position. I think we're about to take up permanent residence here. Another white flag has arrived, Hans. Unfortunately, this officer seems to know his business. Colonel, my one consolation is that thanks to my sister, your plot has failed. Really? I thought the plot failed because one of my men died saving the little girl up there. Father, you had better join your flock. Clark, what can I do for you? Surrender. Surrender? Mr. Churchill is safe and under guard. Your associate, Mrs. Gray, is dead, and a radio has been confiscated. It's all over, Colonel. I have hostages. Well, I can't see you bringing them out, women and children, in front of you. No. Let the villagers go, Altman. Father, your people, please. I understand none of this, and I don't wish you well, but I'm grateful for the life of my child. So am I. Don't forget, Father. The last should be first. you out of here. Uh, now, Pamela's all right. She's in the hospital. Oh. Father. Yes. Goodbye, Captain Clark. Colonel, there's no such thing as death with honor. Just death. I have no intention of dying now. But if I'm going to, Allow me to choose where and how. And 
What do you think you are doing? Getting the keys to his car. How did you get in here? There's a tunnel. It's an ancient escape route they built under the graveyard, past the manor house, right up to the victory. The car is parked at the end of it. Mr. Devlin, you are an extraordinary man. You know, Steiner, you're an extraordinary judge of character. There is a way out now. It is still possible for us to capture Churchill. Not us, Herr Oberst. You. If we all attempt to leave, we'll fail. Very probably. Do you have a suggestion, Brandt? You go and we stay. And we hold this place as long as possible. Shall we say covering fire in about 30 seconds, Herr Oberst? Yes. Hans, you come with me. It has been a privilege to serve with you.
We can stay one step ahead if the radio is still inside. If the e-boat is still outside. It's out there. I love you. That doesn't mean I like what you've done, or what I've done, or even understand it. I only know that I couldn't have lived with myself if I stood by and let you die. Did you read my letter? Yes. Well done, Captain. My congratulations. No, we didn't get everybody, sir. There's three survivors. Now, there's Steiner, the colonel, Devlin, the Irishman, and one German officer who we know was badly wounded. Now, with your permission, sir, I'll make a sweep of the beach road and pick them up. Can't stay for long, I will best. The tide. Get on board, Mr. Devlin. I'm not leaving. I beg your pardon. I'm after staying here. Hans. Take the Hauptmann aboard. on board, Hans. I will not do it. I'm coming with you. How long have we known each other? Since the day you kicked me out of the plane at Narvik. Three years. Hartmann Ritter von Neustadt. In all that time, you have never once disobeyed an order of mine. And I have no intention of letting you start now. Herr Oberst. Take the boat offshore and stay there as long as possible. Yes. You don't even know where he is. That's right. You're still going after him. The time has come, Mr. Devlin, when I no longer control events. They control me. Goodbye, Mr. Devlin. I hope you find what you're looking for. I already have, Colonel. I hope I haven't lost it in the finding. Herr Oberst, a message from Albatross. It, uh... Read it. It's very garbled, sir. We could have misunderstood. Please. One wounded fledgling left, return nest, then it's unintelligible. Uh, no tide at present, for... Uh, then it's unintelligible again. Uh, 
God save. That's all they could understand, sir. Get out of your car, back to Berlin. By plane, car, anything you can still come and deal with my authorization. You have a wife and children. Huh? I was measured for my casket months ago. You understand me, Carl? Yeah, I, I, I think so, sir. You were following my orders, you had no choice. The Admiral's a decent man, you'll understand. By car. Go. Go. Still working the dogs west through the woods. Results negative. Say again. Results negative. Work back to our coordinates 5 4, Wilson. We'll go. Frazier, this is Delta 2. It's Frazier here, sir. Still staked out at intersection A4. Negative on anything. Okay, Frazier. Roundup from Delta 2. The convoy is being moved to original destination. Stay off the air until I call from there. Frazier out. Somebody in there. Well, let's take it. There's no way. Door's open. I'm not charging in there like Custer. What the dogs do.
told you those dogs are no damn good. Your pardon, Herr Reichsführer. Message received from Albatross. It's fragmentary. Get me Habsturm für Fleischer in Cherbourg. Jawohl. In the name of the Führer, you are under arrest. May I be permitted to note a charge, exceeding your orders to the point of treason to the state? Yeah. Whiskey? Uh, no, I won't, thanks. Well, he seems to be comfortably settled with his cigars and brandy. There seems to be some question as to the identity of an American officer who preceded the convoy through the gates, sir. No, no, my men led the convoy. One moment, please. Captain Clark? Captain Clark speaking. You're what? 
What do you mean he's unconscious? His Jeep is missing. Jesus, God. He's here. Shot. No one will ever know what he did. Never know? Are you crazy? That's Winston Churchill lying there. No, Captain. That is one George Fowler lying there. He is a variety artist of a sort and a very brave man. Incredible. He knew this sort of thing could happen. He didn't even call out. Played it straight through to the end. Where is Mr. Churchill? Well, I suppose it really doesn't matter. You'll read about it in the papers tomorrow. At the moment, he is in Persia, in conference with your President Roosevelt and Marshal Stalin. Tehran, Captain. That's where the reality is. This... This never happened. It did not occur. Major. Right. Bonnie, my love, as a great man once said, I have suffered a sea change, and nothing can ever be the same again. I came here to Norfolk to do a job, not to fall in love. By now, you'll know the worst of me. Try not to think it. To leave you is punishment enough, but it will not end here. For as they say in Ireland, we have known the days. Here.